let's fucking party. I'm an adult who doesn't have any Zoom lectures tomorrow. It may or may not be 1 a.m. Can you see it? About half an hour ago, I had a lot of energy. I was having a small dance party in my room to the masterpiece for the eardrums that is Lady Gaga circa like bad romance and tea, that like old Lady Gaga. Not that new Lady Gaga doesn't slap also, but I was having a trip down memory lane. I was just chilling in some nostalgia times. And uh, I was like, Catherine, Catherine, why don't we do something productive with this, this? And I was like, well, shoot, why not film a video? What should I film? I'm not prepared for anything. When am I ever though? But uh, I was like, let's do a tag. It's been a minute since we've done a tag, hasn't it? An impromptu tag. Also, how fun, how exciting, how spontaneous. And so I went a searching on YouTube and I found myself the, what's the name of it? Give me a second while I check because God, I don't know. It's finally fall book tag. Who created this? Phenomenal question, I couldn't tell you, but you will find a link to them in the description because I will figure it out. It's 10 questions about books and fall. Two things I love most, dearly, because I am a cliche. The one thing I did decide to do to make this video a little bit more is that I am only allowed to choose from the books that I've read in 2020. So that means that I can't use any super backlist titles that are like default answers. The reasoning behind this may or may not be the fact that I genuinely don't remember anything that I've read before this year because I feel like I've been living this year for my entire life, but um, we're gonna go with it and we're gonna pretend like it's just a fun challenge that I worked up for myself in an excited but sleep deprived haze, yes? Okay, so let us jump in in the interest of not wasting any time. First question. In fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. I'm gonna go with the house, no, a house at the bottom of the lake or a lake by Josh Mallerman. I read this in August recently, so I haven't really talked about it yet. I didn't like this book, but it fits the prompt because the only thing that I genuinely remember about the story is the setting. And if you haven't guessed from the obscenely long title, it is set at a house at the bottom of a lake. Um, this is a book that I thought was bad, and if you and I agree often on horror, you'll probably think is bad, but I wouldn't like generally not recommend it. I do get why people would like it, but I didn't like it. But the house at the bottom of the lake was there, and that is a setting, and I remembered it first, and so I'm putting it for this question, and you can't stop me. Question number two. Nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. I am going to say Luster by Raven Leilani for this one. I also read this book in August. Notice a trend. This is a book about a young girl who is just trying to get through life. I mean, to put it briefly, but also accurately, she is working at a publishing house. She doesn't really know exactly where she's going with her life, what she wants. Her life is pretty messy. That messiness is what drives this book. It deals with a lot of very real and very raw topics. Um, in this case, race, finding your identity, considering who you want to be versus who you are in the moment. It also goes a lot into like relationships. There's a very funky love situation going on here. I would consider it like a heavier book. One of my favorite things about it though was how beautifully it was written. I was sitting there the entire time I read it and I was like, is this really a fucking debut? I cannot believe this is a fucking debut. The word choice, the prose was uh, you know? Yeah, I mean there are a lot of great things about this book but definitely one of those things is the fucking delectable writing that it has. So uh, definitely luster, you should read it. All right, number three, fall is back to school season. Yeah, it fucking is. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. I am going to say In the Dream House by Carmen Rae Machado. This book taught me that an author can take a common genre of book, like a memoir, and make it something completely new, completely unique. It's not told in this traditional memoir style, and so she switches up the format, and it just completely transforms the book and the experience. And this is one of the best books I've read all year, one of the best memoirs I've read in my life. I as we know, love a good memoir as a completely nosy bitch, but this one was 
even better than just any old memoir because it was not only incredibly interesting, poignant, and emotional, but also from a writing standpoint, I feel like I saw something new that I had never seen before. And that answers the question. Number four. In order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family slash household slash friend group that you'd like to be a part of. Well, God, there are so fucking many. From my 2020 books, I'm gonna go with The Death Girl from Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer. I know it's on brand. You don't need to tell me. Shut your face. I'm kidding. Open your face. I love it. I love to see you. You're beautiful. The Death Girls are a group of college students in this book who are each obsessed. Each girl, there are three of them, is obsessed with their own dead poet. So like Sylvia Plath, Anne Sexton, etc. You know, they stay up late at night and by candlelight read poetry. I mean, was it possibly considered at the end of the book that the shared obsession with dead poets that brought them together in the first place was based on mildly unhealthy coping mechanisms? Maybe. Do I care though? Absolutely not. I would love to be a death girl. Oh my god, don't make any noise, it's one in the morning. Question number five. The colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. That's not a question, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Here they are. Got a lot of oranges, some yellows. I don't really have any reds. Well, that could be counted as red. Anyway, do I, am I supposed to like tell you what they are? I can't say anything about them. They're literally all TBR books, but um, I've got Last Days by Brian Evanson. It's about cults, so it's also brown. That's a fall color. I've got Water Shall Refuse Them by Lucy McKnight Hardy. This is a folk horror novel. I'm so excited to read. It's orange. That's a fucking fall color. I've got Real Life by Brandon Taylor, which I am pretty sure is gonna get shortlisted for the Booker Prize, which means I'm gonna get to read it really soon, which is very exciting to me. It's a campus novel, I know that. I don't know much else about it. I know my sister loved it. I know a lot of people have given it five stars. I feel like I might give it five stars. I've got high hopes for this one. It's also orange, so fall. This is terrible. This is truly bad. I've got Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez, which is a short story collection. Horror, spine, fall, yeah. I've got two books I stole from my sister when we went to drop her back to DC. I've got Trick Mirror. I've got Slouching Towards Bethlehem. Nonfiction. Both fall spines. What up? Question number six. Fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. I'm gonna pick a memoir, cause I can. The obvious choice for a memoir that I haven't talked about yet in this video is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty, which counts for this video because I reread it this year. I read this at the end of last semester for a final paper that I was doing on stoic view of death, if you are familiar with Stoic philosophers. No, I'm not a philosophy major, thank God. But I had to take a philosophy class, so that's what I was doing, and I decided to make it fun. Anyway, not important, not the point of the question. This is a book about Caitlin Doty, who's a mortician. I fucking love this book. I think it is the most interesting shit. I, I mm, yes, and then also, as previously discussed, I'm a hoe for memoirs. We know it. It's it's true. So reading this and getting those good, good death tidbits and also getting to learn about the life of Caitlin while she worked in a crematory. Goddamn dream come true. There it is. Yeah, this is good. This is good. I'm making content. This is content. Question number seven. The nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. My fucking pleasure. I have two. Firstly, a book I read really recently in August, which is Dear Laura by Gemma Amor. This is an indie published horror novella that I read in the middle of the month. It's very reminiscent to Pen Pal, and I feel like that's a book that definitely gives off very kind of lo-fi horror vibes, but creepy nonetheless. Does that make sense? This is a book about a young girl whose best friend is kidnapped and she starts to receive letters from the kidnapper and it's short, sweet, to the point. It's super creepy. I enjoyed it. End of sentence. My second one is certainly an honorable mention for I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid, as we've discussed many a time on this channel. Uh, this one's more scary than creepy to me. It scared the fuck out of me in a pretentious existential way. I'm mentioning this now because the movie did just come out on Netflix. It was a time. It was a time for sure. So I wanted to let you know that I've watched it. And if you want to hear my brief and un- 
intellectual thoughts about the film, there's a highlight on my Instagram. All right, uh, question number eight. The days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. I read a lot of romances in August and Behind Beach Read, which I've already spoken about and I feel like is quite popular at this point in time. My second favorite one was The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye and I definitely feel like that would fit this. It's not the best romance I've ever read. I mean, it wasn't one that I feel like is ridiculously memorable, but while I was reading it, I was absolutely having the time of my life. It's got two very strong main characters. I was really rooting for them to get together, but I also really cared about their own separate subplots, which is rare, I feel like, for me in romances. I want to feel those like warm, fuzzy feelings towards the main couple that simultaneously makes me feel empty and cold and sad like a wind tunnel because it reminds me of how alone I am. Yes, okay. And, um, can you hear my dog snoring? It's fine. Um, what am I? I already, I lost my train of thought. Hello? Ma'am, you threw me off my rhythm. Rude. What was the question? What was I saying? I don't know, but The Right Swipe, while it isn't like the best uh, thriller, no. What? <laughs> Focus, bitch. While it isn't the best romance I've ever read, I did really like it and uh, it was absolutely heartwarming and it did 100% feel like shooting straight serotonin into my brain. I probably should tell you what it's about. It follows Rhiannon, who is the owner of this dating app, and Samson, whose aunt owns a rival dating app, and they intersect with each other at this like dating app convention business thing. They end up getting put on a project together, which would be fine, except for the fact that they actually had a one night stand months before the book takes place, and then Samson ghosted Rhiannon, and so they have kind of like this rivalry going on, but then it turns into a second chance romance. It's pretty fucking cute, I won't lie. So that's what that is, and I would recommend it. Question number nine. Fall returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. This question was answered almost for me because I have to reread one of the books that I've already read that just so happens to be an old favorite of mine for my YA Lit class isn't that exciting. My syllabus for YA Lit is thebomb.com and one of the books that I have to read, I think we're reading it in October, is uh, actually gonna be We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. So this this book, if you followed my channel, I can't believe I'm about to say this, way back in 2017. First of all, I'm so sorry you had to see that. I pray your eyes have recovered, but this book was my favorite book of the year that year. It was like my favorite book of all time until I read, of course, Radio Silence. So this was a very influential book in that period of my high school life. I related to it very strongly and I don't really have a lot of memory of what happens in it and or like exactly what it was that made me feel so connected to it other than it's a book about like sad teens and I was a sad teen and so I was like, it me. And so I'm really, really curious and excited to reread this, not only so I can see if it still speaks to me the way that it once did, but also I'm curious to read this book in an academic setting and see what my classmates have to say about it and what my professor has to say about it and if my like viewpoint reading it for class is different from what I remember vaguely from reading it for fun. So uh, this is the answer and that's the end of the question. Question number 10. Fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. I'm gonna go ahead and say that my cozy reading accessory is my puppy. Gertrude. I often read on my bed. She often comes and snuggles my feet. She's actually here right now. You've probably heard her snoring throughout the entirety of this video because she is dead asleep on my bed. There she is. Very asleep. Yeah, I know. Oh, big stretches. You're like, leave me alone, bitch. Okay. Well, anyway, that's the answer. That's the book tag that I forgot the title of already. Thank you so much for joining me. It is now 2 a.m. I'm gonna leave now. I don't have an outro. Okay, bye. <laughs> Great stuff. Good content.